the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. A destination fixture for any nascent USL club. Your first home match against MLS opposition. And tonight, it arrives for Monterey Bay FC Union as Monterey Bay entertain San Jose Earthquakes, a club just an hour up the road. Welcome to Cardinale Stadium. My name is Chris Whittingham alongside Eric Dobransky. And Eric, as I mentioned, Monterey Bay just in their second year of existence. Yeah, and Frank Yallop is not foreign to building organizations and teams and when we talked to him this week he just continued to express his excitement over this matchup and mentioning to us is that this is probably the biggest game in club history thus far no question a club that did make the playoffs last year but looks to climb up the table this year the top scorers in the usl championship with 15 from seven games christian valeski one of the players that leads the way and such an attacking presence in good form he had a goal and an assist in the india 11 game this past saturday ranks 18th all time in the usl championship in goals with 52 He's just consistently dangerous in and around the area, in the box, in the final third. So they're going to count on him to really influence that attacking portion of the field. And meanwhile, San Jose Earthquakes, a club that despite being in MLS since 1996, have yet to reach a U.S. Open Cup final. And again, talking to Luchi Gonzalez, he made it very clear that this is a trophy that this organization wants. And the excitement and traveling on the road, but those two MLS Cup champions, it, from Frank Yallop's time at, at San Jose yeah. Earthquake, but the tie, so the ties there are there, so just adds to the excitement and the level for this this matchup. Significant layer, also that 2012 Supporter Shield won with Frank Yallop in charge. We get to our player to watch for San Jose. Has to be Kate Cowell in the starting lineup. He started every MLS game, started the U.S. game against Mexico a week ago. Goals change games, and Cowell's ability to create in a variety of different ways. He can stretch a back line. He can also drop in, interchange, and work in front of a back line, opponent's back line. He could just create for himself and others. So again, watch for him to, Monterey Bay is gonna have to track him throughout the buildup. He was signed at 15 years old, the youngest goal scorer in club history, and starts in this third round match here against Monterey Bay. San Jose making six changes from the team that lost away at Rail Salt Lake at the weekend with Kate Cowell, Jackson Ewell, Rodriguez, and Paul Marie, the players uh, among the players that stay in the lineup. Meanwhile, from Monterey Bay, they're making four changes, probably the biggest one, no Alex Dixon, despite the fact that he leads USL championship in goal scored. Yeah, no Alex Dixon, but I think for Monterey Bay, the key is going to be defensively, and it's going to be what do they look like in those transition moments. They play this expansive style of football, so when you get dispossessed and you lose possession, you know, where, who's slowing the play up and then really look for Fair and Yoseki to be those two key players, allowing numbers to get behind. And then for San Jose, can they set the tempo early? Can they guide the tempo in and out of possession? Look for Jackson Ewell to play a con as connector. He's gonna explore various space and really connect that back line to that front line. Yeah, you have three players in the starting lineup for San Jose that have yet to start a match in Major League Soccer this season. Also a big return for Daniel in goal. He has been out since match day two when he tore his meniscus, had surgery, was available from the bench at the weekend against Salt Lake, and now makes his first start upon returning. But for Monterey Bay FC Union, a big night as this nascent club plays its first ever match against MLS opposition. They won at the weekend against Indy 11 away from home. And Monterey Bay FC Union, 15 goals for 12 goals allowed. They will certainly provide some entertainment, but this club that only just arrived into USL last year, formerly Fresno FC, left that area in search of a stadium, which they find here in Monterey Bay, just about an hour south of San Jose and now can he take on San Jose in official competition they did play in preseason in a match that Lucha Gonzalez among others describes a very good warm-up for the earthquakes they did and again these are two organizations that are fairly familiar with each other yes. obviously you mentioned the preseason matchup but the connection with Frank Yallop in this club he mentioned to us in the call that he still he still follows San Jose earthquakes yeah. and how they are in the table and the form they're in so he still checks on them every Saturday after they're done playing. So it's it's a team that he's familiar with. Obviously, Luchi Gonzalez played for Frank Yallop. So there's just so many connections yep. with throughout this game. And you also have uh, Ramiro Corrales, who is on the uh, technical staff under Frank Yallop, used to captain San Jose Earthquake. So a ton of connections. Yallop, the current manager of Monterey Bay. And he has said he wants to entertain and Give the fans something to enjoy when they come out to this Cardinal Stadium, which 
was only just recently renovated. We used to host the graduation ceremonies at Monterey Bay Cal State. And now they host the soccer games for both Monterey Bay FC Union of USL Championship and the men's and women's soccer team of Cal State Monterey Bay. So a venue that is well suited for this club. They hope tonight we'll see a cup set. We've yet to have one so far in this third round, which kicks off today. We'll tell you about scores from around the Open Cup as we go on, but all the MLS sides are winning or have won. Can San Jose continue that trend? Monterey Bay will want to be the headline makers at the end of the evening. Our match day referee is Christopher Calderon. We are about ready for kickoff here from Cardinale Stadium. As we are now underway, a big night in the history of Monterey Bay FC Union as they take on the San Jose Earthquakes. And straight away, an early opportunity for Monterey Bay to try and challenge up in the attack. Early pressing from the kickoff in Valeski will play it by the corner flag. San Jose and all the other MLS teams arriving at this stage of the competition into the third round. Monterey Bay and the other USL Championship sides in the second. They beat Central Valley Fuego by three goals to one. It was actually nil-nil after the 90 minutes. And an extra time, Christian Valeski, Alex Dixon, and Sam Gleedel getting the goals that sent Monterey Bay through to this round of the competition last year. They went out at that second round stage, losing to Bay City's FC. Would have played San Jose had they progressed, but now having their chance here in 2023. As Seni Buda trying to get San Jose out of their own end. And Roberts will keep possession here for Monterey Bay. Lori Doner. And Frank Yellup had mentioned that the start is so important for matchups like this in a tournament setting. You want to be the team that's playing on the front foot. This is obviously a team that plays that expansive style. And you mentioned the goals for and goals against. I think what stands out to me as well is those 15 goals come on 52 shots, which they lead the league, the USL Championship, in conversion rate at 36%. So they're efficient in front of goal. And I think that's something that's very, very important when you're playing in a US Open Cup game because you, you have to take your chances, but you also have to be efficient. Donor. Trying to get the beating there of the Peruvian international, Miguel Trauco. He's back into the starting lineup. Wasn't too pleased there with the challenge of Palmer Martinez. It will be a free kick. Trauco, who did lose his position somewhat by going on international duty with Peru. Paul Marie doing well in his place. He shifts over to right back on the evening as the long ball hit towards Cowell. Featured in the buildup. Here is Marie. Buda unable to control and given away. It's loose there. Kukanovic went sliding in to try and win it, but Donor with a nice first touch to send himself forward. He's on his side of throw. That win for Monterey Bay at the weekend. They were 1-0 down away at Indy 11. Actually, 1-0 up and then went 2-1 down. Valeski, Velo Yoseki getting the goals to make it 3-2 at the Carroll Stadium. Nice challenge there. Now, Ewell can come forward. Find scan on that low ball, but the interception there for Monterey Bay. I'm curious how a San Jose attack that has not had a ton of time together in terms of matches. Gels here. And getting to talk to both coaches, it was almost like they were talking about each other's teams almost being identical because they talked about how defensively they were really built and organized to be very tough in a situation like this, even though Monterey Bay is tied for the lead in, in goals conceded in the USL Championship. But then they also talked about the dangerous individuals they have on the attacking side of the ball. Mm -hmm. So making sure that you track those runners and you're aware of them in those transition moments and not losing track of the space 
And that's why I think Jackson Ewell is going to be so important to this matchup for San Jose. Because I think he's going to be able to drift into different areas. He's going to be able to play make from different spaces. Marie. San Jose dropping the result at the weekend in Salt Lake. Cristian Espinosa, the lone goal for the Earthquakes. He's already on to six goals in MLS. He's available from the bench. Should San Jose need attacking reinforcements? Escaen is onto it. Tries to get the cross in towards Yule, is making the run in the heart of that six yard area. Let's deflect away. Out for the corner. This will be an early look of how each of these teams are going to set up both offensively and defensively on set pieces. There's Trauco's delivery into the near post. The straightforward header away and further still. San Jose trying to keep it through. Marie who volleys forward. in by Karalko, who took the corner. Kikanovic. You already have to enjoy the pace of this game. Both teams really looking to build up quickly. Chris passing early doors here as Cowell makes the run in behind. The challenge came in. It will be a free kick. As Robinson catching enough of Cowell in the judgment of referee Calderon. And set piece from a decent crossing position here for San Jose. And this is where you want to be careful early on in these matchups because if you tend to concede some of these set pieces this early on, first off, the opponent's getting early looks at how you set up defensively. But secondly, it really does dim the tempo a bit. As that free kick comes through the area, Kikanovic trying to get something on it. Jason Johnson did manage to play it off the Earthquakes player did come out for the throw. Johnson, who dealing with injury issues in the offseason, re-signed with the club late in the day. This is a remarkably consistent side year over year. You see a fair bit of turnover often in the USL Championship. But a lot of the key contributors sticking around, and Frank Yallop rewarded for his decision bring a lot of players back as the side has gotten off to a good start. Yeah, and I think to your point, you get consistency, but then in a matchup like this, you also get balance. And as we see Frank Yallop, you have balance of players that have really had a, a various array of experience within the USL Championship, but also throughout MLS as well. So you're not going to get a lot of players that are shy from this environment and this situation. Told you in the open, Yallop was in the technical area for almost all of the Silver Art One. The history of San Jose was telling us about managing such a good side in the early 2000s, the 0103 side that featured some incredible MLS talents. And then when the club returned to San Jose after the club was relocated to Houston, building that team up from scratch. I think at least some part of where they are now is Kikanovic shouldered off it down the line by Donor. It will be a goal kick to Monterey Bay. And had some glowing things to say about the organization, San Jose and Luchi Gonzalez, the coaching staff, what they're doing there in San Jose. Obviously, continue to express how he wanted to, you know, it's going to continue to show on the field for San Jose. He just hoped not tonight. off to a much better start than in years previous in this MLS season. Currently fifth in the Western Conference. Struggled making the playoffs in recent times and when getting there, it has not been tremendous in terms of results. Luchi Gonzalez trying to turn that around. He was the assistant under Greg Berhalter at the World Cup. Managed FC Dallas for two years and change. And joined Berhalter's staff. a lot from the experience of managing at that high level. 
high pressure games and supplied some of that here in San Jose. Some of the principles of play as well as Cowell will find Marie on the overlap. His cross into the near post. Buddha couldn't get to it. Donor clearing if temporarily. Nice defending there from Monterey Bay is that service from Marie was a decent one. And going back to Luchi Gonzalez, he talked about he's really enjoying the progress of this team. And you saw it in that sequence, their ability to break lines of pressure and one, two, three passes and they're in. And that's something that he feels like is coming with a bit more consistency and a bit more flow. As Buda was being harried there by Johnson. Ewell trying to take it quickly. It was a decent idea, but the referee was not ready for that to be taken. Yeah, what the referee's saying here is Jason Johnson just never released on Buda here. Just staying on his heels. That last little challenge catching yep. him as well. This remarkable competition welcomes MLS sides. USL clubs retain that dream of winning this competition. Sacramento Republic reaching the final, ultimately losing to Orlando City, but what a run it was, including beating this San Jose team, where their run came to an end in the round of 16. They did beat Seattle Sounders on penalties on their way to facing Sacramento. I mean, that's what you get with the U.S. Open Cup. You just, with the draw, you get so many of these matchups that you wouldn't typically see. You see a club like San Jose having to go on the road to Monterey Bay. And then the various challenges in just playing somebody you've never seen and, and you don't see typically in terms of scouting report, preparation, presentations. And in a short period of time in between Correct. games as well as both these teams did play on Saturday. Build up here from the earthquakes. Cowell's first time delivery is lofted in towards Kikanovic, who kind of just started his leap a bit too early, caught some of it, but came glancing off him and out for the throw. We talked about the pace of this game early on. Now this pace has shifted to San Jose. And again, it's it's coming from their ability to link passes really quickly through the midfield and then find those wide areas in the final third. I think for Monterey Bay, it's, a, it's gonna be about getting first ball pressure a little bit quicker, a little bit more purposeful. Yoseki trying to find Gleedle in behind, but the two Brazilians calmly playing there. Daniel and Rodriguez. Daniel's ball though forward, goes out to touch. First game action since suffering that torn meniscus. It was brought in to be competition for JT Marcinkowski and started the first two games for San Jose. Player who was acquired from Inter in Brazil. And anytime you have center backs that are playmakers like you have in San Jose, I mean, it just adds an element for, for opponents to have to deal with because you have to not only worry about the space that you're leaving in behind, but you're also having to apply pressure. Lovely skill there from Rodriguez and just couldn't play that final ball through. It's fantastic to work himself into that space and now Johnson can get running at this San Jose defense. Just leaving it there for Robinson to take over. Gleedel. His low delivery, taking a deflection there and out for the corner. Nice work there from Johnson to start the move. Yeah, really good spell there by Monterey Bay coming off a turnover there. And quickly finding that ball forward and, and earning themselves a corner kick. Frankie Allop expressed how detailed they had to be in some of these opportunities that they can create, whether on set pieces or on transition. As the delivery comes to the back post, it's still on here, it comes through the area, 
and just wide there from Jason Johnson. A decent chance there from the corner. Really well worked. Corner kick here. You go far post, and it's always that ball across the face of the six that's very dangerous, and you get a player like Jason Johnson on the end of it. He just barely misses this left post. And another chance that's just gone wide there for Monterey Bay is find themselves under some pressure here. The Earthquakes. And this is what's gonna suit Monterey Bay as this first half continues is trying to win the ball higher up the field so they don't have to keep counterattacking, going 80, 90 yards every time they win possession. Try to win it at midfield. These are two teams that like to get expansive. As Kikanovic is trying to direct it forward, but straight at Anthony Siaha. Does represent a change in goal for Monterey Bay after Carlos Herrera started at the weekend. Johnson. That's a late challenge there from Michael Baldissimo. He's not only going to see a free kick given against him, thought for a moment the referee in his pocket and give a yellow, but it would just be a free kick. A hard challenge off the ball. Catching Martinez there late. Seems like he went lunging for the ball and then lost control. You can see Luchi Gonzalez down there for San Jose. Pleading with that fourth official about that play and turnover here. Kai Green trying to hit that switch but didn't get enough on it. Now Cowell is barreling down this defense. Here's Kate Cowell. The goalkeeper, Sia, came out to try and narrow his angle, and Cal couldn't direct it towards Sargent. He almost questioned the move to leave the line that quickly and that far out by Siaha, but it really pushed Cal to make a decision sooner than he wanted to. And he sails this ball here. Really well done by Hugh Roberts to close down the angle as well. She almost thought that Siaha would leave himself to get either chipped or a ball clipped over the top. And I think the angle that Hugh Roberts had forced Cowell and the space that Siaha took away, really have to be careful with those, those casual turnovers, especially with no pressure. And well dug to keep it in play. Yoseki into Valeski. Scored in the second round. Scored at the weekend in the win over Indy 11. Key player to keep around for year two here in Monterey Bay. A 58 degree night here in Seaside, California. Far away from the Pacific Ocean is the free kick given there. Robinson. And Moby Fair. A travel player. He played for the United States under 17s at the under 17 FIFA World Cup, but he's gone on to play in a variety of places, including Japan and Vietnam. Here in the USL with Monterey Bay. Back heel. He turn there. Able to steady himself. As Martinez. Club's first ever signing. And graduate of Cal State Monterey Bay, where this game is being played. Imagine couldn't have dreamt of a stadium and an occasion like this in this area. Crowd on hand to see 
supporter stand for both Monterey Bay and San Jose represented. See they're now in your top left corner, the San Jose Ultras. Celebrating 20 years as a supporters group. Making a noise here at Cardinale Stadium. You're going to see this shift of momentum throughout this matchup because these are two teams, again, that really pride themselves in what they are on the ball, both positionally and the way they're able to move and interchange. And you could see Luchi Gonzalez, that, that last sequence, he wanted his team to be a little bit more patient, see the ball a bit more in that sequence. There, a look at the San Jose Ultras. In the short trip just down the road, down the 101. It's about an hour between San Jose and Seaside here. This is the last match being played tonight in the third round of the Cup. Busy Wednesday night of action. Tomorrow we'll tell you about that at halftime as Tip behind in towards Skayen. Tries to get it pulled back in towards Kikanovic. It was the right ball, but Kikanovic made that hard run towards the near post, and nobody there to apply the finish. Nice work coming forward there from Skayen. And San Jose consistent, consistently attacking that left side of Monterey Bay, so they obviously feel like they've got some matchups and some numerical advantages there on that. Their right flank, Monterey Bay's left flank, Whether that's the ability to drag Grant Robinson out there or go at Hugh Roberts. Cowell. And Johnson poked it beyond the re there and then was caught by the French right back of San Jose Earthquakes. Has one inside a free kick. who was a prolific goal scorer the Phoenix Rising over three years, scoring 23 times. He played for Frank Yallop a number of times as well throughout his career. Putting an MLS for Chicago Fire. And that's that experience and that balance that this organization has continued to bring in. And again, the consistency word that you used earlier they have players like Goner on to Yulon in a flash. And now on this left side, Robinson beyond the defender. The cross into the back post is headed away there by Trauco. Mori Doner, tremendous win of the ball to start this move. They have players like Walmar Martinez that, as you mentioned, played here at Monterey Bay. And Sam Gleedle. And just a variety of, of experience, whether it's overseas, USL, MLS. A very prototypical roster build in USL. Some league experience, some local flavor. And it's far too early right now, but as this game wears on and it stays nil-nil, each of these teams is going to have to showcase their depth. And we mentioned it, both of these teams coming off road games on Saturday. And we talked about, we talked to Lucci Gonzalez, and he had mentioned that the, the travel on Saturday wasn't too difficult in terms of from, from Real Salt Lake back to San Jose and their ability to kind of come back and do some light training and start preparing for this matchup. But as this game continues to stay this tight and this back and forth, they're going to eventually have to make some changes. One incident we didn't show you because we were in a replay. San Jose were dispossessed playing out from the back, and Jason Johnson had a strike go wide. So San Jose remaining dogmatic playing out from the back and without their usual of starters. Here 
Here's Green. Far too much air underneath that one. It is out for the throw. Fans that dive deeper into the thrills and drama of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Join the conversation on Twitter and Instagram at Open Cup and Facebook at Official Open Cup. It's now for Kikanovic to stretch his legs and run here at Donor. Benji Kikanovic. Squeeze there for Fuda. And Marie. Clip it there in towards Kikanovic. Winning the header there was Green. And that buildup right there was almost too well done and too quick for San Jose. I mean, it was a tremendous job of pulling Kai Green out of that center back position and finding Kikanovic there in the open area, but there was no numbers to join. So they almost had to recycle, reset. And all that work of pulling Monterey Bay out of position, just let them get set as well. And it's given away and a chance here for Monterey Bay. It's the opening goal. It's a mistake from Daniel at the back. Now then, does the third round cup set begin here? And you had mentioned it just a few minutes ago that Monterey Bay was very opportunistic with the way San Jose was trying to build out of the back. And this ball just gets right under the foot. Rodriguez and in. right there, Valeski. Just the ability to stay with that play and be opportunistic to the point of if a mistake happens, you're ready to jump on that ball. And then the second portion of that is actually putting it in the back of the net. It's just a soft giveaway there from Rodriguez. And Valeski, who scored in the second round, has a goal against MLS opposition here. And now San Jose have to turn this game around. Could this be a signature moment? This club's early history for Monterey Bay. They lead MLS opposition San Jose Earthquakes by a goal to nil. Trauco in towards Kikanovic. Now let's see how San Jose responds because that was, a, as you mentioned, a casual turnover and really. Yule having a crack, enforcing a decent save out of Siaha, who had to tip it over the bars. That was a missile headed for the top corner. My goodness, Jackson Yule almost with the immediate response. Head up, preps that ball on his right foot. And as you mentioned, puts Siaha into a upper hand save there. Might San Jose have been awoken here. Swung into the near post. Away from the goal scorer, Valeski. And out for the throw. Now the Monterey Bay supporters having a bit of a taunt towards the San Jose supporters. And really for Frank Yallop and his side, a, a dream response to having to absorb some of those sequences and some of those moments that San Jose's put them under. And you mentioned the, the opportunity from Jason Johnson. Estrauco, it's a nice ball in towards Cowell. Takes down, cutting inside. Kay Cowell, what's the next move? Still Cowell. Still Cowell. Actually finding the release here. Yule into Skayan. Couldn't control it. And Siaha on top of it. And Frank Yallop's group has just stayed persistent in the moments that they wanted to absorb and in the moments they wanted to be opportunistic, as in that turnover with, with the Valeski goal. And now you get the crowd back into it because the, obviously the crowd could see some of that momentum going to San Jose. But you already have to like this, this last three to five minutes from San Jose, the response that they're, they're having. Green couldn't control it. Just get booted away, although offside flag was up against Useni Buda. And it will be a free kick 
even against the native of Burkina Faso. Frank Gallup continuing to mark instructions at his charges. Must he be feeling leading against his twice former side? Well, it's always so fascinating to see some of the scenarios that present themselves in this tournament format because it, this isn't a regular season. This isn't you could play for one point on the road. You can you're picking up three points. It's either win or advance. So losing two nil, losing one nil, it's all the same. You're you're eliminated. So how do you navigate those scenarios that you're not seeing through the regular season? And with a, a team like Monterey Bay, that their identity is built off this brand of football that's exciting, it's energetic, it's fast-paced, it plays on the front foot. They're not gonna know any other way or they're not gonna wanna play any other way than go ahead and try to find that second goal. So for San Jose and this team and, and this game in general, the next goal is really gonna di dictate a lot. It's not really a side that's built to lock down. <laughs> yeah. Hang on to a 1-0. Conceded 12 goals and seven in USL Championship, which is tied for most in the league. Despite their good results, they've scored 15. <laughs> and your games feature an average of nearly four goals a game between the two sides. You want to buy a ticket or turn the game on, which I imagine a few of their supporters have done now. Find out their side at leads by a goal to nil after a half hour. Cowell on the byline, getting turned, lovely skill. The cross in towards Buda. Leaping to get a piece of it there was Green. And Donor was playing out that time. Shoulder into Donor there from Miguel Trauco. And he's going to see a yellow card as he went into the advertising boards. And a first booking shown the way of the Peruvian. Yeah, Trauco just getting his shoulder down. And but you talk about that touch here by Kai Green. Anytime you're dealing with services inside your 18 yard box or even on the attacking side, it's all about initial contact. And obviously we see the foul on the yellow card there by Trauco. And as much as we've talked about some of the success that San Jose has been seeing on that right side, you give Monterey Bay a lot of credit. They've been able to get numbers in the box, owning the experience of dealing with services, covering different areas, really limiting the danger that they're having to face. Rodriguez will have to make amends for his earlier error. Unable to do so there is his ball towards Cowell. One there by Robinson. Tricky feet there from Johnson. See Joseki directing traffic there in the middle is imagine number six would, but they are winning these 50-50s, but there, Huda winning it for San Jose and playing in Kikanovic. Touch too heavy. Ran out of room. Literally. And I think that's another aspect that comes into play here is getting used to this turf. You take a touch and you think you have time and space, maybe a ball that might hold up at your park. It just runs out of, it runs out of ground. And for San Jose, you could see the intent and the commitment to try to find an equalizer here before this first half comes to a close. Control there, Johnson. Marie. San Jose, all the pressure on them to create. In this game round as Buda was in an offside position. It'll be a free kick. Pressure perhaps also on some of the individuals out there. 
Their replacements are waiting in the wings. Otero, Ibobisi, Espinosa all ready to come on in attacking positions and influence this game. Long up towards Valeski. Over Valeski. Yeah, those are going to be changes that Luchi Gonzalez and even Frank Yallop are going to have to look at at halftime. Where do you want to influence the match moving forward? Talk about the scenarios that present themselves in the U.S. Open Cup. I mean, you have extra time that's that's out there. You have penalty kicks if it gets to that point. So you just have a lot of elements that aren't present in the regular season that you could play for. The cross to take a deflection on its way through, so it will be a corner. Trauco again. This time a decent amount of air underneath it, but over the head there of Beeson, who had come forward. We'll stay forward, though, as well gets recycled. Lofted into the area. Rodriguez is there, but a straightforward catch there for Siaha. With the one big save from Ewell in his first half. Donor. And I think that's what Siaha does extremely well, is influence those services, those aerial services. He's so good at meeting the ball at its highest point, really commanding his box as well. So for San Jose, they've really depended on those aerial services. So they might have to start changing some of these runs up, finding different angles, different layers. Ray Bay insisting on the passing game at the moment. Hugh Roberts. Ray Bay have looked right up for it from the start. Nice chest there from Martinez. Monterey Bay has only continued to grow in confidence defensively. They're really meeting that ball first in every challenge. And for San Jose, how can you get Buda more involved in that final action, whether it's faced up, whether it's creating for his teammates off the ball as well? Other than just a few moments, we really have not seen him on the ball in that final third. We've seen Cal on the ball quite a bit. We've seen Jackson Ewell. Rodriguez. And Beeson. It's a San Jose side that does create a fair amount in the league. Second best in the Western Conference in expected goals. Their usual complement of attackers. Only one of which in Kate Cowell plays from the start here tonight. Forced backwards here by Monterey Bay. Rodriguez. Baltissimo, the former Vancouver Whitecaps player. Rauco bending in behind towards Yule, but too much air on that one. And those are going to be the scenarios that San Jose is really going to have to start asking different questions of Monterey Bay, because I think when you looked at this matchup, it was really about how can you, or when you expose Monterey Bay in those transition moments where they are big, they are expansive, where they, they've given up channels and spaces. But you've seen San Jose, they've been really patient in the build and they've been effective. But it does play into the hand of Monterey Bay where they can get into good shape, they can get in good support. They can create those, those speed bumps throughout the fields where if you break one line down, you got the next line to go at, then you got the next line. Free kick given here, Buddha 
was clipped there. San Jose taking the chance to get players forward. It's hard to see a game without the vanishing spray as Trauco whip it in into the back post. Budo arriving. Just couldn't direct it towards target. Sonny Buda trying to put himself about in that center forwards role, but unable to test Siaha there. And this is an area that San Jose continues to be dangerous as all these set pieces. You see Buda beating his defender inside and almost looked like he was getting tugged from behind as well. It would have been a soft penalty, but certainly some contact there in the area. Beeson was upended there, and that is a harsh landing as well for the center back, Tanner Beeson. He's clipped that little bit there by Martinez. And Beeson is not pleased with how a bit of contact came in. He's expressing that Walmer Martinez should be getting a yellow card for this. Obviously, clearly not going up and challenging the ball as Beeson did and putting his arm out. Martinez is going to indeed receive a yellow card for that. You can see the genuine rage there on Beeson's face. It's, it's a tough landing on the artificial surface here at Cardinale Stadium. Yeah, and falling at an angle where there's just really no easy way to catch yourself. So. Yeah. Baltissimo. Skay in there first, but... Danger swept clear, and now Polito going to try and put Beeson under some pressure. The header back, forcing Daniel to deal with it. You just wonder if this scoreline holds going into halftime, what each of these halftime talks are about. Because for Monterey Bay, do you want to find a balance between going and finding that second goal but also just not exposing yourself to, to space in behind or space out wide. Ball is clipped in towards Kikanovic. Receives it back to goal, but he was offside and hit it there off the head of Maury Doner, who's gone down. After the play had already gone. And now referee Calderon motioning for the Medical staff to come out and have a look here at Donor. Here, another look at it. It's like after this offside's call. Ooh. Right off the side yep. of the head. Yeah, it's but good to see he's okay. No medical attention required in the end. Siaha sends long. Skayen managing to win. Homer North Carolina Tar Heel was a four year starter there before being taken in the second round of the Super Draft by the Earthquakes. He's been in a reserve role. These Open Cup matches are big opportunities for players 12 through 18 in, a, in an MLS squad to get a run out. Valeski plays it first time in towards Gleedle. Beeson with just enough to slow down the run of the Englishman. We could fully charge him behind. Right now, Valeski's goal profiting from Rodriguez's mistake. The difference between the two sides. We have not yet seen tonight in these six previous Open Cup matches. Aside from a lower division, beat a team from a division above them. Could be on our way to our first of the Open Cup third round here tonight. Monterey Bay of USL Championship. Leading here by a goal to nil. Marie. Cut inside, but couldn't control it. Ahead of Yoseki, who immediately waves his players forward. To get their lines going up. Receive so much pressure. Yoseki again winning it. But dispossessed 
by the right back Marie who turns on it and is clipped by perhaps the overeager Sudanese midfielder. And it will be a free kick to San Jose. And I have to believe that for Monterey Bay, they're going to be okay with having to defend some of these set pieces because Siaha is good in those aerial challenges and in, in, in meeting the ball at the highest point and, and commanding that box, but they've been good with initial contact. I mean, what you don't want is to get beat in that transition moment, so you'd rather slow play down. As Fidalco lifts it into the area, did Rodriguez get something on it? It will indeed be a corner. They're being told the minimum of two minutes to be added at the end of this first half. Now, I do believe Monterey Bay is okay with seeing some of these set pieces 40, 45 yards out. I think these corner kicks have been very scary for them. As Fidalco will take it short here. And on the return, will transcend it low first time through the area towards Cowell. Fidalco still trying to get there as is Skayen. Just about received. Couldn't play the one two though. Nicely shaped by Ewell. Out to Cowell. Draws the attention of two. Cowell. Cross taking a deflection. Now Robinson trying to get Monterey going forward. Nicely done there by Jason Johnson on the first time, but on the second time given away. Gidako's effort wide. And as I say that, San Jose goes short on the corner and Monterey Bay prepared for it. I just think set pieces, corner kicks, free kicks, they're an aspect of the game, especially in these games where you're not familiar with, we are not overly familiar with your opponent. You don't really get to examine how they set up in a consistent manner. So you have the ability to disguise a lot of different runs. And it could really be a way for San Jose on some of these corners to find that equalizer. Kikanovic. Slided towards Buda. Kai Green taking no chances. Putting it away for the throw. Buda. Kikanovic. Leave it there for Yule, but not quite coming off for him. Kikanovic. One back here for Jack Skayen. Nicely in behind into Ewell. Gets turned on and just tries to clip it in. Roberts winning the initial header. And then clear from Donor. And there is the halftime whistle. Christian Valeski profiting off the mistake of Rodriguez. And Monterey Bay are 45 minutes away from perhaps their biggest win in their brief club history as they lead San Jose Earthquakes by a goal to nil. And it's the excitement and the energy we expected from this matchup. And although it's only a one nil game, it has been back and forth with both teams committed and very intentful going forward and trying to find some of these, these differences in the attacking third. And for right now, it's Monterey Bay up one nil. And a lot for Frank Yallop to ponder at the halftime interval. Lucci Gonzalez to try and get a response out of his side. But it is indeed Monterey Bay 1, San Jose 0 at halftime of this U.S. Open Cup third round match.
Hospitality is a proud partner of the Monterey Bay Football Club. Coastal Roots Events and Catering, along with its three iconic restaurants, Montreal, Tarpies, and Rio Grill, invite you to pick it up and pay it forward, where 10% of all proceeds from takeout orders are donated to various local charities. Their catering service and restaurants utilize local farms, butcheries, and ocean-fresh, sustainability-driven seafood to deliver unique and exemplary dining experiences. For more information, visit CoastalRootsHospitality.com.
rates with over 50 different insurance companies to make sure you get the best rate for your car, motorcycle, home, or business. Coast is a local company with local people leading vehicle registration and 22 head insurance for Mexico. Call Coast Auto Insurance today for a free quote and see how much we can save you. Or go to coastautoinsurance.com where your peace of mind is guaranteed. SeatGeek is the ticketing app for fans like the High Five Strangers Guy. Game winning interception. First down. Just a nice solid tackle. If you're at arm's length, you will be swapping skin with this extrovert. You see, he knows SeatGeek got him a great deal on tickets, so he can focus on what he does best. Smack it ball. SeatGeek handles the tickets to sports, concerts, and more. So fans can fan. Monterey Bay leading San Jose Earthquakes by a goal to nil at halftime of this Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup third round tie. The USL Championship side getting a goal through Christian Valeski. Lead the Quakes 1-0. Welcome back to commentary of this one on Bleacher Report platforms on the app and on YouTube. Chris Whittingham alongside Eric Dabransky as we can take a look now at the results from around the Open Cup in the third round tonight, and it's mostly been chalk so far. Eric St. Louis, despite making 10 changes, beat Un Union Omaha by five goals to one. Sporting Kansas City, 3-0 no winners over Tulsa Athletics. What stands out to you in this bunch yeah, of results? Yeah, welcome to the U.S. Open Cup, St. Louis City SC. I yeah. mean, what a performance, 5-1 over Union Omaha, a team that, that really gives a lot of the other teams fits throughout the U.S. Open Cup. And then Minnesota United at, for San Jose Earthquakes, they're going to want to replicate that second half for Minnesota United yeah. because they went down 1-0 at halftime to Detroit City FC, scored three goals in a matter of six minutes in the 60th, 63rd, and 66th to take that game 3-1. But as you mentioned earlier, no lower division against upper division victory so far in this third round. Could potentially have one on the cards here tonight and perhaps some more tomorrow. Plenty of third round ties in the Eastern time zone. Tampa Bay Rowdies, Houston Dynamo was an interesting one. The two Miami clubs going at it. What's your pick of the bunch, Eric? Yeah, I was going to go with Miami FC and Inter Miami. Yeah, Inter Miami having to go to Miami FC again. That that Miami Classico a little bit. I mean, yeah. Right down the road. I think that's going to be an interesting one. Obviously, Indy 11 and Columbus Crew. Columbus Crew getting knocked out last year by Detroit City FC. So again, a number of tremendous uh, matchups tomorrow. And two Chicago clubs, Chicago Fire and Chicago House as well. Going at it here more in the Western time zone. Sacramento Republic begin their campaign after finishing as runners-up last year against Oakland Roots. Colorado against Northern Colorado. What are you watching for here, Eric? Well, Northern Colorado Hailstorm is a team that gives a lot of a lot of the U.S. Open Cup opponents fits. I look at that Nashville and San Antonio FC matchup. San Antonio, no stranger to beating MLS sides in the U.S. Open Cup. They beat Austin FC last year. And then Real Salt Lake and Las Vegas Lights. That'll be an interesting one uh, for the two teams there. And uh, all those games uh, tomorrow. But let's focus now on our game here, Monterey Bay and San Jose. As we get into our first half highlights of this one. And here would be the goal, a simple routine playing out from the back. Jackson Ewell and Marie giving it back to Rodriguez, who would just try and 
Slider across, he just let it run beyond him and Valeski applying the finish. And we talked about Valeski in the open just being that influential attacker and that consistent attacker. And this is what players like Valeski do. They go and wait for a mistake like that, and then but they not only are able to turn the ball over, they're able to get their head up, find the space, and tuck it away into the back of the net and put their team up 1-0 in such a crucial matchup. And that was at a moment where San, San Jose really had momentum and was playing on the front foot. We see sequences like this. They had a number of corner kick opportunities where they had numbers forward. And then this was just a few minutes after the goal. Jackson Ewell with the strike right outside the 18 yard box, prepped it, that top hand saved by Siaha as well, but it was set pieces for San Jose. And I think that's gonna be a way that they're gonna continue to be dangerous in the second half is some of those set pieces as we saw Buda get on the end of that. Possession in favor of San Jose, which is absolutely no surprise. It was really picking and choosing for Monterey Bay when they wanted to press. And we saw the mistake that led to the Valeski goal. Yeah, and Rodriguez just a lapse in concentration. All of a sudden the ball's flying beyond him. and. Those shot figures tell the narrative of a game that didn't have a ton in it, but we kind of felt like the game had good tempo and it just ultimately wasn't those big chances created. It did, and for San Jose, they're going to look at it. They just need to be more urgent when they do break into the final third. I think Luchi Gonzalez and his team are going to be happy with the areas they've exploited for Monterey Bay. We said it a number of times on that right flank. They got a number of good services in, but you just need to add the urgency in that final third, the runs, the services, that, that final play to get this equalizer. And, and with this tournament format, and this Euro, US Open Cup, you're gonna see a 45 minutes that San Jose is gonna throw everything they've got at Monterey Bay. So now what adjustments does Monterey Bay and Frank Yallop make to his side? And Already, San Jose making some changes to try and influence things. Jamita Montero will come on for Jack Skayen. So, trying to bring some creativity into that midfield, which is perhaps something that was lacking in those first 45. And also, Christian Espinosa coming on for Benji Kikanovic as we're underway in the second half. And Eric, one of the things we were talking about during the halftime break was how long would Lucha Gonzalez wait to bring on the big guns, as it were? And the answer is not very long. Yeah, and, and it always, it's always an intriguing question because you get into the conversation of flow. How long does it take a player to get into the rhythm, get into the flow of the game? And, and you and I had talked about maybe that 15 minute mark. You know, you're giving a team 30, you're 15 minutes to start the second half and then possibly looking at different changes. But as you mentioned, Luchi Gonzalez feeling like he needs to make those changes immediately and see that start the second half off strong. And again, I don't think there was too many negatives from the San Jose standpoint. I mean, a bit too casual in the build up to the back and, and allowing Monterey Bay to get numbers behind when they when, when, when they were on the ball. So just missing a bit of that urgency, but I mean, you do have to like what you see. You just need to create some more. Other than that Jackson Ewell chance from outside the 18 yard box, I can't imagine too many other opportunities. I mean, maybe the Buddha header off that, off that set piece where he had his defender beat inside, but not forcing Siaha into too many saves. Cowell with the sombrero, but couldn't quite get on the other side of it. So two halftime changes from Luchi Gonzalez. Try and alter this one. Marie. Kate Cowell moving back to the left wing. Buda remaining up top and Espinosa now on the right wing. So Kikanovic and Skayen making way. Marie trying to whip it in towards Buda, but Roberts in the way. Ewell. Along with Cowell, who's with the U.S. men's national team. They're friendly against Mexico, which finished one all. And Espinosa. His third in MLS in goal scoring has got six to his name, including at the weekend against Real Salt Lake. Only Jordan Morris and Denny Buanga of LAFC scored more in the league than Espinosa in the American top flight. Espinosa. 
How do you line up another one? He goes for gold, but underneath that one, but the warning sign going out to Anthony Siaha. Espinosa's efforts will be coming. And you can already see how electric Espinosa is on the ball in that final third. The Argentinian talked about his goal scoring, but his time in MLS, it has been his assists. Largely led the way, not only for the Earthquakes, but in Major League Soccer as well. Set for 13, 8, 9, and 14 assists in his four years in the league after joining Villarreal in Spain. Valeski. Kai Green. Finding Donor well. And get the cross in. Back here by San Jose, but Monterey Bay still packing numbers forward, trying to cause San Jose a problem and playing out from the back. You will about emerging from the danger of that one. Well, and I think for Monterey Bay, sorry to cut you off. I think for Monterey Bay, you're gonna they're gonna view this as they've they've picked up a goal off a casual turnover for San Jose. As Espinosa will get the cross in. Cowell was trying to get underneath it on the back post. But they're going to feel like they have one more opportunity to create themselves. And I think they're going to be looking at, can they convert that opportunity? So can you build up one more time, maybe off a service or an entry pass in behind? And it's about tucking that one away and making this game a 2-0 game as we see a player down right outside the 18-yard box as well. San Jose under no obligation to stop play, but now it will indeed. And now medical attention is being waved on here for Moby Fair. Curious what exactly happened there. Off the ball. The New York City native back up to his feet. It didn't look like there was anything in it, but those are almost the most dangerous ones we see a player down. Uh, any particular reason pointing towards his right leg. And actually, Fair is going to come off here. As Adrian Rebolad will come on. And the way Fair is signaling, it almost seems like this was a discussion at halftime that he had felt, whether it was cramping or he felt a knock, because it did seem like he was signaling as if he needed a substitute right away and he could not continue anymore. Kabiara come on for him. So change confirmed in the end. So both managers making early second half substitutions. Lucha Gonzalez keeping a third substitution window available to him by making the changes at half. So now a chance for Baldissimo to step forward and have a chance here. Thought he might have a crack. Might still. Turns and plays it for Marie. Off it to the back stick and strong claim in the air from Siaha. And Herrick, you picked that out as perhaps his best trait. Yeah, and it, you talked about some of those initial chances that he could have had on a strike, but then settling for a lofted service in playing to the strength of Siaha. And you can deal with settling for some of those aerial services, but you're really not. The, the problem San Jose's having is they're not causing Siaha to move at all. They're not causing any traffic. They're really not causing any deception after that service. So it is really just a routine, go meet the ball and, and then play out of the back. So you're gonna wanna add a different element there Espinosa. Baldissimo. In the corner into Useni Buda. Could have a go here. He also helping it on here for Marie. Marie cutting inside. Marie trying to find Montero, but was making the run. Hard charging into the area. Just behind him. San Jose 
looking more comfortable going forward here early stages. Flipped into Espinosa. You can just hook it through in towards Buda. Roberts getting something on it. Robinson further still. Johnson might just have to clear lines. He plays it off a of cowl. And out for the throw. San Jose can get the press going forward here. You're seeing a bit more of that urgency, but now with urgency, you need to see decisiveness. And right now, you've seen a number of opportunities passed up for San Jose. Now, you don't want to settle for unnecessary shots and, and you know blocked shots, and you want to always look to upgrade. But there has been a couple decent looks that they've passed up. Baltissimo went sliding in, but Maribay recovering through the substitute Rebellada. Well, Hart's coming down that right and well played there by Trauco to hit it off the donor. And the throw and start it quickly up to Montedo. Powell hadn't really yet begun his run and they able to recover but only briefly. Rodriguez. I'll say at fault for the Monterey Bay goal. Started every game in the center of defense for San Jose in this early season. Even overall, this Earthquakes defense is almost the entire backboard change. At the end of last season and beginning of this one. Trauco part of that as well. Cowell lost his bearings there the wrong time. Just plays it up. Where we'll do it's in towards Ewell. Now Montedo. Former Philadelphia Union DP. Their record transfer at the time. He's traded to San Jose. Now Espinosa cutting inside well of Robinson. Espinosa low through the area. Dangerous attacking play, but no finishing touch. Baltissimo. And Trauco trying to play it back towards him. He felt like he was fouled. A couple of Earthquakes players felt like he was fouled, but the play on through Marie. So just the kind of skill that Espinosa has, and Buda couldn't quite get to it. Now Jeremy Ibobasi, the latest regular starter for San Jose, being prepared. And what a clever action there by Espinosa. Not only just beating that first defender, but exploding past and getting that service off. So we see San Jose appealing for a foul there. I'm nearly there from Johnson. He was trying to find Galito in behind with the header. Just couldn't. I mean, we discussed it at the break of how quickly it seemed like that first half went just because of the, the flow and the way these two teams like to play. And I mean, it's already happened here in the second half. You look up and we're already in the 11th minute and San Jose is out there chasing this, this goal to equalize. Even there at times leaky defense in the league, Monterey Bay have looked pretty solid here. They have and, and they, they seem, and I think you can attribute that to being okay with what spaces and areas you are, you know, you're you're leaving available, and mm -hmm. you can see they're okay with services into the box. They're okay with giving up the wide areas. They're content and getting good numbers in those spaces where it's predictable to defend. And I think now it's on San it's on San Jose to add a bit of that deception and add a bit of that. I wanted to talk about flexibility, but add the adaptability there in the final third. And I think that's what Espinosa's injected here in the second half. There's Marie's ball, not measured well enough. And now I do think that San Jose will confirm their change. Buda off, Ibobasi on. So something like the starting front five. Now on for San Jose. See Bobasi got four in the league, hit for a brace against Sporting Kansas City in the last home match. Come on and lead the line here. Yeah, unfortunately, unfortunately for Buddha, he just was not able to find his way into the match. And, and 
You talk about on the other side of the ball, Valeski, he did find his way onto the ball, whether it was a turnover, whether it was in buildup, but he found a way to influence the game and find one of the goals that sits as the game winner right now, but Buda was just not, not able to find a way to impact the match. And now we see Ibobasi. Marie going for it. Struck it cleanly, but was always going wide there of Anthony Siaha's goal. Siaha, a goalkeeper who signed midway through the season a year ago after trialing with the club, was playing for San Diego Loyal. Before that, was playing in the MASL, the indoor soccer league here in the U.S. He's been around. Looked up for the challenge tonight. Gleedle shouts for hands, but Demick is San Jose win the ball back anyway. Look out into that wide area, but one back here. Gone down there was Yoseki. Felt like he was caught. It will indeed be a free kick here, and now maybe the chance for Monterey Bay to add to their lead. out a player like Jason Johnson who is so effective on set pieces and it's whipped into the area headed away there by Beeson and Cowell clearing Siaha showing that comfort on the ball continue to play this Monterey Bay side as Martinez has won his side of throw Near the hour, Boleski's goal still the difference between the two sides. And by the way, Monterey Bay still have the USL's leading goal scorer on their bench they can bring on. So they need more attacking reinforcement. Not certain they do at this moment. In the shape of Alex Dixon. Bobasi. Trouble there was Cowell as Yoseki trying to fire up this crowd. Certainly an emotional player in that midfield area, communicating with his teammates and really putting himself about. You throw to San Jose, who appear stuck on that far touchline. Throw it down the line there up to Espinosa. And booted out for yet another throw. We saw that moment with Yoseki, and this is where. On a chance coming in down the other end. And Siaha having to jump onto it. It was a first time hit from Ibobasi. And towards that bottom corner. And Siaha was up to the challenge. Good save. And I was just about to talk about in matchups like this, as we see the quick transition. The left-footed lace there by Ibobasi. Jason Johnson, low cross, hit up for the corner. Now another, perhaps, opportunity here for the set piece. Or Monterey Bay Union. And I was just about to say that at this 30-minute mark is where you start seeing teams sway emotionally in terms of whether you're up a goal, you're down a goal, but there's so much time in a setting like this because you just find the equalizer, although you might not want to see an additional 30 minutes because of the time and, and the where, you know the energy that it takes to play. You'd rather be playing those extra 30 minutes than find yourself eliminated. So you just have to play until that 90 minute mark, find a goal, possibly push this game to extra time. So emotionally, do not get frustrated. the corner to be played in there. And the first time volley is saved by Daniel. A massive moment 
in this cup tie. As the San Jose keeper has just about kept this one new. This one two idea there from Voleski. Able to feed that ball in behind and towards Martinez. What a chance. And there is absolutely no question that if San Jose is able to get themselves back in this match, that we are gonna go back to that moment and that save by Daniel, keeping this game at 1-0. I mean, you talk about a game-changing save. I mean, this game goes 2-0. You're definitely looking at an uphill climb for San Jose. Espinosa in towards Marie. And he is poked out for the throw. Now let's take a look at that volleyed attempt. What a delivery there. Monterey Bay committing all of San Jose's defenders to that near post. But that save by Daniel, just so important at this moment in the match. It's a great hit as well from the central defender, Kai Green. Forward for the corner. Huge moment. Montero is cross sailing into the air. Anywhere will do for Donor. And volley forward, well done there by Yoseki. And now there's a chance to break here for Monterey Bay. They get on with it. San Jose though, able to get numbers back and Union decided just to keep a bit of possession here. A couple of changes being ready as Johnson strides in the attack. His cross will sail to the back post. Valeski unable to keep that one in play as it did come out for the goal kick. Looks like Max Glasser was being readied. Who will come on here? And it also does look like indeed Alex Dixon will enter as well. And it just shows where Frank Yallop's mind is with going after this second goal as well. And I think for Luchi Gonzalez, just looking at this 65 minutes thus far, it's just gonna be disappointment on some of these entry passes and some of these entry services. Cowell. Cutting inside, using his significant burst of pace, his strike takes a deflection, will come here to Espinosa. His low ball is cut out by Grant Robinson. It's away for the corner. Just as it looked like it was opening up for the Quakes there. It's almost an unfortunate sequence there for Monterey Bay that that ball slips right through on the deflection. San Jose earning another corner kick. Was Cowell is doing jumping jacks on the back post as the corner comes who comes off of Ibobasi. The header is saved. Beeson got something on it, but Siaha across and handles well. And Siaha has made some of these chaotic moments inside the 18 yard box just look so routine. You think there for a moment, the numbers are there for San Jose, the opportunities there, but Siaha has just been so quick to set his feet, regain focus, get a new picture of where the ball's at. He has not had to make a really loud save other than that Jackson Yule opportunity in the first half with that top hand deflected over the crossbar. That's just how Siaha's made everything look so routine as well. Hits it into the Ray night sky. It's done there by Yoseki. Able to find Valeski there. It was Gledo. Back by San Jose. Continue to chase that equalizer. Espinosa trying to run in between the defenders. Ewell. Altissimo settling here with Cowell. Bay on their first cup match in the second round. 
their second ever Open Cup match against MLS opposition. Rodriguez, last year going out at the first opportunity to Bay Cities of NISA. Trauco and Montero cutting inside and Yule try and clip it first time in towards Montero but too much air underneath it pulls out for the goal kick now confirmation of the changes Omar Martinez will exit as will Jason Johnson for the introduction of Alex Dixon who is currently USL Championships top scorer with six from seven matches, did also score in that second round win over Petro Valley Fuego. And then bringing in a defensive presence like Max Glasser. And for San Jose, that relationship and that, the work between Alex Dixon and Valeski, you just don't want to concede that second goal. But these two work so well off each other. And although Jason Johnson didn't impact the goal that was scored for Monterey Bay. I think some of the moments leading up to that goal showing Monterey Bay that San Jose was susceptible in the build-up play. He had a chance early on in that first half where he turned the where San Jose turned the ball over in the build and Jason Johnson just missed just to Daniel's left. And that really started to prove to Monterey that they could Monterey Bay that they could turn the ball higher up the field on San Jose. So really decent outing for Jason Johnson. Now, it will be a throw after Conso with the assist. We've seen that happen a couple times from Christopher Calderon. Rodriguez. Obviously, first time out towards Espinosa, but too much on it. Has come out for the throw. Jose have thrown best attacking options at it. Through 25 minutes, Monterey Bay have been up to the challenge. Lauded for their ability to attack. At times criticized for conceding a few too many. How remarkable would it be they summon the clean sheet tonight. I was just thinking that about Frank Yallop's side is how ironic right now that what they're showcasing at its best is their defensive shape and their ability to get numbers behind the ball. And it really against a dynamic San Jose Earthquake side. I mean, they have not shied away with, with the introduction of Espinosa and Ibobasi. They've proven to create as soon as they've touched the ball. And that, a lot of credit to Hugh Roberts and Kai Green because they've organized everything in front of them. They've won aerial duels like that. Calm and composed in the build. Altissimo. Decent skill to work down that line without taking it out of play. It's out for a throw. San Jose will want to get on with it quickly, but. Spinoza having to just loft that one out of play. Towards Montero. Inkbobasi trying to return it for him, but progress is impeded there. It will be a free kick. It is Herboyad who is responsible there. Okay, now this is going to be a test for Monterey Bay and Siaha because he's going to have traffic in front of him. So whether you go straight on frame and test him with a direct shot, you're still going to have to worry about oncoming traffic. Now a free kick to come. 
Just over 30 yards. Is that too far away for a strike? Loki Burton, Seattle off to get set as the whistle had already sounded. It will be Espinosa to take. He'll go for the strike. It's low, and it's spilled there by Siaha, but he's back onto it. Dangerous there for a second from the Tucson native. There to deal with it. Now, could there be a chance to break? Gleedle. Turning on it and playing for Robinson Four from left back. Now, Dixon into the area. Down with there by Beeson. Did Monterey Bay just commit a bit too much? A nice challenge there from Rebel Yacht. And it was a great question you posed before the take was, was it too far to test Siaha? But that wall got separated. That traffic was really tough to see through. And you just wondered if it was a moment where Siaha would spill it, and he did, but, um, but clearly close enough that he could gather it again. Rodriguez hitting it towards Cowell, but Header one there from Maury Doner. Jackson Ewell, a little more than a quarter of an hour left to play here. Given away there by Montero. Now Gleedle is just drifting through this midfield as Valeski running with him. Will play it further out to his right. The chance here for Monterey Bay. And it was a good chance for Union to get forward, but Yoseki who's charging in, just hit it high and wide of target. And really good commitment here by Monterey Bay. The turnover at midfield from San Jose, and Gleedle just driving at that back line, really causing them to tuck in and stay narrow, and opening that right channel for that shot there. And obviously, Gleedle and Valeski wanted the ball that far post. Minosa trying to bend in towards Ibobisi. He was offside. Did have a change in there as well. Tommy Thompson on for Paul Marie. Slots right into right back. Just the one change left for Luchi Gonzalez. Valeski. Just clip it through, but nobody arriving. like there is one last big chance, but we did see one on the set piece that Daniel saved. Roberts heading it on, but it does come from Montedo. Cowell now can get his head, look towards goal, has a hit. Roberts in the way. Espinosa. Attacking option left to Luchi Gonzalez should he choose to try to make another change. Montedo chipped in behind there from Ibobasi, but the offside flag had come up. More grains of sand falling through the hourglass here. There's more U.S. Open Cup action ahead tomorrow night. More than a dozen matches will be streamed live, but Wednesday's coverage kicks off at 7 p.m. Eastern as Louisville City winds up the Ohio River to tackle FC Cincinnati, and the fun doesn't stop until Portland Timbers hosts Orange County SC at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. Visit usopencup.com for the full schedule and links to watch more matches. We'll go across Bleacher Report. Senior Sports Golasso as well, showing a few matches. Loose pass there from Beeson, just giving it away. Now, Glasser. We're being told that Carlos Gruesa will be the final change for Luchi Gonzalez to come on for Baltissimo at the next stoppage as it's lofted in behind. Glasser, first time in towards Valeski, but dealt with there if temporarily. Gleedo nearly profiting. One back by San Jose as Baltissimo comes forward. Montero.
Rodriguez. Thompson. Now, all hands on deck to defend this lead for Monterey Bay FC Union. Espinosa low through the area. Roberts there to deal. Another bite at the apple for Espinosa. Again, Roberts there to deal. He has put in a lot. This back four has put in a lot. This 11 has put in a lot. To get to this stage, the chance to beat MLS opposition is now Grueso will enter. And San Jose is going to continue to throw numbers at Monterey Bay. As we mentioned earlier, there's no difference in dropping 1-0 or 2-0, so you need to find that equalizer. As it's whipped in, the header is over the bar. It was a chance there for Rodriguez. Would have been an opportunity to make amends for the Brazilian center back, but put it straight over the bar. You talked about the performance of this 11 thus far for Monterey Bay and almost really getting off the hook here. Missing some marks. Rodriguez right there, almost having a chance, just needing to guide that on frame. But the performance from this 11 for Monterey Bay, they are gonna do everything to see this game out. A bit more time off the clock here as they get a throw. A little bit of the ball. And do it here in the San Jose half. Ovoyad and Dixon trying to combine on that left, but one back by the Quakes. Right, they still trying to press. Make it easy for San Jose to get turned and get going towards their goal. Certainly can't question whether or not at this point playing a full strength San Jose side. Remember their usual front six in the side. Yeah. New internationals in defense. Now it's just a question is if there is there enough time. Ten minutes in the 90 for San Jose. Chase and equalizer. Montero tracking it out of the air. Thompson. And Espinosa. Just didn't have enough on it. Another header away there from Hugh Roberts, who has been immense. There was so much USL experience entered the year with the third most minutes played in the history of USL Championship. Ewell trying to play the 1-2 with Ibobasi. Gives to Thompson edge of the area. Ibobasi again. Trying to find that next pass. It's to Montero who went down. His cross is headed by Roberts. And further still. Beeson. And Kate Cowell. And the players who could be the difference makers to be just yet in the San Jose side. Trauco's cross is heavy off of Montero. Anywhere will do, but it just invites another wave of attack. And they've continued to ask so many questions of this Monterey Bay back line, but they've just been up to the task. They've answered a variety of different challenges that San Jose has presented, but whether it's services, whether it's entry passes, on the dribble one versus one, They've really found a good balance between absorbing attacks from San Jose, but also winning the ball higher up the field and collectively defending higher up. Now Trauco figuring out the throw. Cowell. It's played off him last. Cleverly won. That's Valeski all the way back, who indeed did win that throw in. San 
Jose packing on the pressure in the form of shots in the second half, but none of them producing the goal as yet. And Frank Yallop had mentioned it in the call was his team is efficient. <laughs> Four shots, one goal. I mean, they only need a few opportunities to take advantage. Whereas you see that number 12 of representing the amount of shots for San Jose, and but just unfortunately for them, just nothing really testing Siaha. Nice touches there for Valeski. Just to keep it a bit, and now Donor at full pace getting forward. His cross is headed away from Rodriguez. And Montedo around the corner. Thought he might have found Espinosa, but a couple of challenges, and now Monterey Bays again. Donor, pace to burn on that right side. Deflected there in towards Gledel. Struck it on the volley. Able to keep it down. Low kick has to be retaken as there was a second match ball in play. We discussed the short turnaround between playing an opponent that you're not familiar with earlier on, but then you present the short turnaround and then you present the scenarios that show themselves in a matchup like this where you're not typically in a regular season, you're trying to find the equalizer to, to, to get a point, whether it's on the road or at home, but these are elimination games. So now does that change your approach? And then the approach of Monterey Bay, when do you start going to corners? If you're gonna go to corner, There's just so much information that they could have covered in those two to three days leading up to the game that you're not necessarily talking about all the time in training. You're practicing penalty kicks. Yule. This is remarkable if it holds. Monterey Bay's second year as a club, built by a man who built so much of the history of San Jose Earthquakes. I could take him out of the Open Cup. Launched into the area. Espinosa on the volley. Catch it cleanly. No deflection. It's a goal kick. He's showing his signs of frustration. Really, again, well played by Monterey Bay. That back line, the ability to put pressure from behind and in front of Espinosa, really influencing that left-footed strike there. Velasquez with the header. Gledel just trying to get the beating there of Grueso. He's now playing as a makeshift center back. I believe they sent Rodriguez forward. Try and be a threat on long balls into the area. And if this scoreline stands, what a performance Monterey Bay has put on in front of its home fans. Free kick given to the Earthquakes. Crowd at none too pleased. Side in the league that's given up three to Hartford, four to Sacramento, two to New Mexico, two to Indy 11, two to San Antonio. But tonight have kept a clean sheet against an MLS side so far through 87 minutes. Montedo, nice challenge in from the substitute Rebollard. All 14 players that have stepped on the pitch tonight have done their jobs for Monterey Bay and on the brink of a historic moment for this club. Espinosa whipped into the area. It's punched away there from Siaha. Mark Lidl just trying to carry it forward and a massive touch forward at full stretch to try and beat Beeson for pace, but the San Jose center back will get there.
now here with about two minutes, this result becomes more real for Monterey Bay. So you just have to stay switched on, attention to those details. Cowles cross comes out for the corner. Espinosa across the take, and now San Jose sending everyone forward. Espinosa to whip in, comes to the back stick, and there was an unmarked man, but unable to get anything towards it was Tommy Thompson. And it just came awkwardly off him and out for the goal kick. He was in a position of real threat, Thompson. And that was exactly what San Jose was looking for. A lot of runners taking Monterey Bay defenders to near post. Finding a wide open Thompson there on that far post, just unable to guide it on frame. Valeski and Cleedle trying to help it on towards Glasser, but able to get it there. Cowell. Trauco. Cross whipped in. Espinosa waiting on the back post, but Robinson heads clear. Needle on Cureso. Oh, and it's awkward there. It's a miscommunication, and now Dixon can charge here at Beeson. Has Valeski running with him. Here's Valeski to be the hero. Valeski, it's just wide. Might just have caught a deflection. What a moment that would have been to lock up this win. And what a run by Dixon and Valeski there. Seeing an opportunity to put their team up two goals and put this game out of reach. But what an intervention there by San Jose, preserving this game at 1-0, but unfortunately seeing precious time come off the clock for Monterey Bay, he's gonna have no rush to get this ball back in play. Certainly makeshift tape there for the referee headset. Minimum of four minutes to be added here. And referee Calderon just having a quick word there with Lucci Gonzalez as Waleski was slow to get up to his feet. And that chance there by Monterey Bay just highlights the numbers that San Jose is throwing at this union team. Catching themselves 2v1 in the back, but San Jose doing a good job of slowing the play up enough, just enough to get back in behind. That last involvement from Valeski will be his last involvement as Chase Boone will enter for him. Valeski giving everything there to provide that winner. And he now makes way. His goal is the difference maker as it stands right now. Came in the 26th minute off a mistake from Rodriguez. The San Jose center back. Now. About 90 seconds have gone here since the ball was last in play and four minutes were announced. Maybe a minute and a half on top of the four given. It will be a goal kick. Monterey Bay very much with a time-wasting corner there. Didn't waste a ton of it though. The referee will have a lot of discretion Figuring out how long this will go on. How much time do the Earthquakes have? But I'll go long. Hugh Roberts has won so many of those headers. Thompson leaving it for Ewell. Espinosa will whip the cross in, in towards the back post. That's sailing to nowhere. And now the fans here started to really believe. Three pointing for a goal kick to be taken quickly. And unfortunately for San Jose, 
not just from Espinosa, but those kind of services have come to define San Jose's wide play tonight. Just unable to really connect on that service, on that entry pass. You see that Siaha there with the time-wasting yellow card. Offside there, given. Now, we're back in play here by Trauco. Is there a last-minute equalizer to come for the Earthquakes? Gureso trying to win it there. He commits the foul. A professional second-half performance from Monterey Bay. As Boone winning the free kick there. Actually taking quickly. Gleedle could take it towards the corner flag and imagine he will now. Challenge is coming for round him there from Thompson. Gleedle. Gureso poking it out of play will be a throw to Monterey Bay. And a minimum of four was given, but we had about 90 seconds after Boleski went down and then went off. Still some time left, you would think. Just trying to win it cleanly. Boone into the air. Gleedle was nearly there, but one back there by Ibovesi. Now he's got to get forward. Everyone's got to get forward for San Jose. Cowell, so much pace, but runs into trouble there. Glasser put the challenge in. He somehow managed to keep it. Trauco with the switch of play now towards Sami Thompson. Montero. Espinosa around the corner. Thompson going down. Was that in the area? Referee waves play on. Thompson did go down. That ball also in play. Gureso doing well to keep it ahead of the fourth official. Lofted to the edge of the area. Not it on here. Ibovesi can't get there. And it's going to be a goal kick. And that might just be it. Monterey Bay, the night to remember. The supporters might have come here with hope, but they might not have expected this. Frank Yallop, who has so much history against this club and with this club, is on the brink. All eyes now on the referee. Is there one last throw of the dice here for the Earthquakes? Trauco, given away, Dixon, running through, taking it to the corner flag here, now Glasser, surely that's been enough, and there is the full-time whistle, the stuff of Open Cup dreams, Monterey Bay have beaten MLS opposition on their first time of asking, and they're through to the fourth round of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Christian Valeski, the hero, scoring on 26 minutes, and Frank Yalop against the side with whom he won two MLS Cups, has only gone and knocked them out of the competition. The first cup set of this third round goes the way of Monterey Bay as they've beaten San Jose Earthquakes by a goal to nil. And you mentioned it just a few moments ago, just an absolute professional performance by this Monterey Bay side and Frank Yallop's team throughout this 90 minutes. And I would add the description of gritty and balanced to this performance as well because San Jose asked so many different questions of this Monterey Bay team, and they were up to the task at every corner. And the balance of when to press, when to absorb, when to play expansive football, when to tuck in and defend services. They just did it a variety of different ways, and we were talking about coming into this matchup, how Monterey Bay was going to defend because they're tied for the most conceded goals in the USL Championship with 12. Their first clean sheet of 2023. <laughs> I mean, what a time to get a clean sheet. <laughs> I mean, everything that was asked of this team, they answered, and, and what a performance. And obviously, Frank Yallop has to be extremely proud of his club and this organization. 
We talked about it, he mentioned it, you asked him about it, how big this game was for this, this organization. He said it was the biggest in organization history. And what a performance in front of this fan base. What a match. Everything that a lower level opposition would need to do to beat a top flight side, Monterey Bay did tonight as we get into our full time highlights. Monterey Bay, 1 0 winners over San Jose Earthquakes. What a moment for this second year USL club. And it, here would be the goal. And it was really a first half of a lot of different ebbs and flows. And we saw San Jose susceptible sometimes here in the build through the back. And it started with Jason Johnson a few moments before this, getting an opportunity that just missed wide. And then Valeski just hunting the ball down, the turnover going right under the feet of Rodriguez and just burying it, putting it in the back of the net, finding that first goal, the only goal of the match, and really putting San Jose in a frenzy to go find the equalizer in the first half. And it came here really quickly as Jackson Ewell prepped the shot, put it on his right foot, really putting Siaha in the only sequence tonight that he was forced into a really tough save. That was probably the most dangerous moment of the night is have a look at Espinosa's hit. It wasn't really too much trouble. It's a low ball that came from the area from Espinosa, but honestly, might have been Monterey Bay looked the most likely to get the winner here. And we thought, and this was a late deflection here and on a Monterey Bay opportunity, but we thought the save by Daniel midway through that second half was gonna be one of those defining moments that kept it at one nil, and maybe San Jose could go find the equalizer, but I mean, you look at the shot disparity, 14 to six, four to three on target and the possession 64 to 36. Obviously, I don't think Monterey Bay and Frank Yallop thought they would see a lot of the ball in terms of owning the possession numbers, but obviously playing the, the style of play and having the identity they have, the, you know, they definitely were effective in those moments. Especially at one nil up, you know, you have to imagine you're gonna play against the ball a fair bit, but Monterey Bay were up to every single thing that San Jose threw at them. The first MLS side out of the Open Cup San Jose Earthquakes, the first lower league over top flight upset in this Open Cup, goes the way of Monterey Bay FC Union. In their second year as a club, they've beaten the side just an hour to the north of them here in Northern California. As it finishes, Monterey Bay 1, San Jose 0 for our tremendous production team and broadcast partner Eric Dabransky. My name is Chris Winningham, signing off.